all right? I'm just, just tweaking the new broadband. <coughs> you okay? The new broadband? So how did you convince BT to put us back on then? Um, well, I, I, I didn't. We're not getting our broadband from BT anymore. But we still owe them lots of money, which is nice. John, I can't pay the staff. I think that is a little bit rash. We're not, we're not there yet, especially with, especially with potentially the Switzerland deal. I'm so, I'm so very uncomfortable with you going to Switzerland, having lavish dinners, trying to impress this client on the slight chance that he might offer us a contract. But I can't pay your staff. I understand, but I'm not asking you to give me any more money. This is money I've already spent. This is an investment. It would be stupid for me not to go. This is this is great. This yes. is this is great news. Yes. This is brilliant. Yes. And if as long as as long as it makes you happy, it that's does. the most it important really thing. Does. And yeah. if you're free, that means maybe you'd like to come to Switzerland with me this weekend. Yeah. Really? It'd be, yes, it'd be wonderful to have you along. Mm -hmm. I would be really, really grateful if you would maybe consider taking part in the charity triathlon thing. Who's dropped out? Um Caroline. She decided that, you know, time with us was over, so she left. There seems to be something in the air. So how was Switzerland? It was a nice holiday. <laughs> um, from a business perspective, not quite what I'd hoped for. I mean, that's a bit of a shame for us because we're really, really banking on that coming through. So now I'm trying to make contingency plans, which is why I wanted to talk to you. Because you know, we've been friends for years. We're both in advertising. We started interning together way back when. So I was, I was hoping that you, through, through your company, would be able to offer us a loan just in the short term. I had a feeling that was what you were going to ask me. <laughs> Look, John. Emma came to me. And talked to me about the position you guys are in. And judging by that, I'm afraid I'm not in a position to be able to offer the kind of money that you're going to need. What well, could work, as you say. You know, we've both been in advertising together a long time. We know we could work together. If the opportunity arose. Come on board with us. What do you reckon? Are, are you suggesting a merger or are you suggesting a buyout? I mean, are you offering me a, a partnership or are you offering me a job? I'm offering you a chance to preserve everything that you've created. It just, it's, it's very, very difficult to get into my head the idea of going from owning a business to being somebody's employee. I'm offering you a chance to stay afloat here. You recognise the value that, that we have at Switch. You recognise the, the value of the people that I have there. That's to, exactly what I recognise. Yeah, and to be honest, I think you're taking advantage of the situation a little bit too much here. I think that you're seeing a lot more bleak than it actually is. We're not dead yet. Hi, Simon. This is uh, John Cole. How are you doing? Good. Um, I, was, uh, I was just hoping to have a quick chat with you, if I could, about um, potential remortgaging of the, of the house. Emma called. What did she say? You've remortgaged the house. Yeah, I did.
I'm sorry I didn't tell you, I just didn't... I didn't want to put this on you. I'm your wife. You're supposed to come to me with things like this. But you came to me before you quit your job. It's completely different. You're right, you're right. This is my company. I built it. I can fix it. You've been lying. For months. I haven't been lying. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. The only reason... I don't know how we could have those conversations in Switzerland. You saying we should have a family. Emma told me that she tried to warn you. You just wouldn't listen because you were so proud. Um, so, what do you want me to say? Well, just tell us a bit about who you are, what your story is, kind of, you know, what, what, your, what your life's involved until now and where you hope it might go in the future. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm John, I'm, I'm 30 years old. Uh, I, I got into advertising when I left university and I, I set up my own company when I was 26. Um, we did pretty well, and uh, we did, got a lot of government contracts. But since the the credit crunch kind of hit, times have been getting harder. We've had to divert a lot more of our attention towards the private sector, and um, uh, it put a lot of pressure on the company itself. So I diverted resources, I've, I've taken a few risks that I shouldn't have and now I'm, I'm in a situation where <clears throat> the business is, is no longer viable, my house is potentially uh, under threat from repossession, I've rejected the advice and the help of a lot of my friends and burnt a few bridges and my wife now feels that she can't trust me um, because I tried to to spare her all of the worry and stress rather than being open and honest as I perhaps should have been. So I, I've i been sort of posting on Twitter, reaching out really to see if there's anybody out there who can offer me any advice. And I've had a few messages, one guy just telling me that I wasn't alone, letting me know that I wasn't the only person going through this and that really helped and so I, I guess if I could ask anything for the future it would be 
short of a support group, just for some advice for, for people. If you have any thoughts, any any anything that you want to say, then then I want to hear it. I I need help to get a better sense of perspective because I've I've lost mine.